right now today, that time is up. There's no more I'm giving you lies. We're not We're not black. We're not the So we're supposed to give a warning. We're not judging you, we're warning you. Well, have we seen any change? No. Have we seen anything that has changed our people? Changed our neighborhoods? What did America tell you you were? What did they teach us? They taught you you was African American, right? When you look here on the sign, you see here, right? American blacks. So God calls you Judah. Right. Our enemies taught us that we're American black. Right. That we're African American. Right. You know who America was named after? America was named after an Italian navigator. An Italian navigator. Americo Vespucci. You know who Africa was named after? A white man. Africa was named after Scipio Cornelius Africanus. Right. You heard, sis? That's a white man. So when you say you African American, you say you two white people. Right. Does that make any sense, sis? No. They they told me I was a rich port, meaning Puerto Rican. They lied to me too. We the same people, sis. That's right. You understand? That's why you find us, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We in the ghettos. We in the slums. We destroy. We the, we in the same prisons. We in the same cemeteries together. How can we not unify? Bring it up. Jeremiah 50 and 33. Bring it up. Unified. What's your name, sis? I'm gonna show you that all of that, the situation that I was talking about, all those evil things that's happening to only us. I'm gonna show you that that's biblical, but right. the pastors don't bring it up. Right. Let's read the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 33. Yeah. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah, meaning the blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans, were oppressed together. We being shot down by the cops. Right. We populate the uh, prison systems. Right. Our sisters are the ones, the blacks and Latinas, they're the ones in the abortion clinics. Right. Not the Chinese woman. Right. Not the right. Arab woman. Right. You understand, sis? We the same people. We being we suffering under the same curses, but we are not keeping the commandments of God. Right. That's why we're destroyed. Did you know that, sis? Let me show you that. Get through the Romney 2815. Yeah. We're going to show you why slavery happened to us. Right. You, ever, you, 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 you seen Django, right? 12 years of slave. You seen uh, Roots. You remember all that? Those movies, right? With Jamie Foxx. You know that's in the Bible? You go to church? Do they teach you any of this? All right. They're not teaching you the truth, sis. They there because they want your money. Right. We're going to teach you what God calls you in the Bible. You are a princess of Israel. That's right. You're not African American. Right. Today is the day where you should never ever call yourself after two white men ever again. Right. Right. We're going to prove everything out of the Bible. Right. So you need to go back and, and question your pastor. And be like, hey, these brothers was proving everything out the Bible. I knew it was something about that Bible. I just never heard it before. But these brothers finally showed me what was really going on in them. Watch this, sis. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Bring it up. But it shall come to pass. Sis, what's your name again? Angela, right? Now listen to Moses, right? Moses is speaking to the children of Israel, Angela. He said it's going to come to pass. You ever watch the Ten Commandments? What happened during the Ten Commandments with Egypt and Pharaoh? You understand? You remember what happened? The Jews was in slavery. They was in bondage to the Pharaoh Ramses. This was approximately 1540 BC, Angela. You understand? And they were in slavery. And guess what? After, remember when Moses opened up the Red Sea? And they went through the, they, these people went through the, uh, through the sea to get to Mount Sinai? Those were African Americans. Right. right. That, that wasn't white people. I know what we see on the movies, we be like, oh, that's not us. That was us. Yeah. They didn't just steal our style and our customs, but they stole our history. Right. So when we see it on movies and images, we're like, no, that, that's, that's not us. I'm just, a, I'm just a nigga. I'm just a spit. Right. You are God's chosen people, sis. You're the real Jew. You're the real Jew. Right. Your foremothers were Hannah, Judith, Esther. Tabitha, Phoebe, these were the greatest women that ever walked the earth. Sarah, you understand, sis? And they were your foremothers. Right. 
You should be, they should be blown away right now, Angela. You should be blown away because colleges ain't teaching you this. Right. Religions ain't teaching you this. Right. Moses had a, he had a message for them. This was the message, says, after they came out of slavery. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Yeah. This shall come to pass. He said, this is going to happen in the future. This is going to happen in the future. That thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If we didn't listen to what the Bible had to say, Angela. To observe to do all his commandments. Now be a Christian. To uh, do all his commandments. Now be a Catholic. To do all his commandments. No, it says to do all his commandments. Sis, sis, hermanas, ustedes son los iralitas según la Biblia. Así es. Nosotros no somos hispanos latinos. Somos los verdaderos judíos de la Biblia. All right? Hey, sis, Angela. Angela, remember, don't be distracted. Watch what he says. To observe to do all his commandments. Angela, he said this would happen in the future if we didn't do what? If we didn't do his laws, right? All praises. Keep following along. And his statutes which I command thee this day. Come on. That all these curses. All these what? All these curses. Hey, Angela, he said all these curses would do what? Shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Mind you, get Deuteronomy 29 and 1. He said all these curses. What's a curse, Angela? Huh? It's a, it's a, a curse is a bad thing. Right. Meaning that he's going to have these bad things come upon you. If you fear God, you would know, okay, slavery happened because of our disobedience. Right. Not because of the white man. Right. Not because of the Arab. Right. Not, it, it's, you know why we went to slavery? Because we rely on religion right. and not the commandments of God. Right. God says we got to keep the commandments. Deuteronomy chapter 29 and 1. Right. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel. So he said these are the commandments and the covenants that God made with the children of Israel. Mind you, he said that these curses would happen if we didn't keep his laws. Now we're going to get into the curses. Watch this, sis. Get verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Hey, now, how long you been going to church, Angela? Long time, right? Since you was probably a baby, right? Now you got to ask yourself, Angela, you've been going to church for decades. Why is it that you've never heard this verse come out in your church? you gotta, you got to ask yourself, and I know you ain't been to just one church. Me growing up, I used to jump from a different church. When we used to move to another neighborhood, I was at a new church. But the pastor was saying the same thing that the old one was. Right. Let's see. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Bring it up. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Remember, what was the children of Israel doing the first time in Egypt under the Pharaoh Ramses? We was in slavery. Right. Remember, we were the ones that walked through the Red Sea. Blacks and Latinos, Native Americans. That was us. He said, I'm going to send you back into Egypt again. So watch what Egypt means. The Bible will explain itself. We're, this is not an interpretation, Angela. Angela, this is a matter of life and death. We out here because we love you. Right. We out here because we know this right here, nobody's doing it for our people. Right. You know what they're doing? They're relying on voting. They're relying on assimilating. Assimilating with your, I'll, I'll, I'll keep your Thanksgiving, I'll keep your Christmas, and make you rich, Mr. White Man, as long as you love me. I'll keep your Christianity and Catholicism, I'll be a Jehovah's Witness, as long as you love me. Has any of that worked, Angela? Or are we still getting shot down? Are we still in the ghettos and slums? Did Obama change anything? Are we still in the ghettos and selling drugs at a higher rate? Bring it up! Has there been any change? We've been protesting and marching. God says because we didn't keep his commandments, I'm going to bring you back into Egypt again. Meaning slavery. Let's prove it. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 6. Yeah. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. From what? From the house of bondage. It says that Egypt means the house of bondage. You know what bondage means, right? Slavery, captivity. Bondage, it's right here, sis. Look at the sign. God says, I would bring you back into slavery. Read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Don't lose me, Angela. I want you to really hear this. This is crazy right here. This is something that I never heard growing up in church, Angela. Watch this. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Hold on. He said that he would bring us back into slavery, bondage again, with what? With ships. You got a smartphone on you? 
Huh? You got internet at the house or something? You got you got you got a phone? You can Google, right? We all got the uh, we can all Google something. If you look up slavery and ships, what nationality is gonna pop up? What people gonna pop up? Who's gonna pop up, sis? Who went to slavery and ships? Huh? You said us, right? So who's the children of Israel? Who? You better believe it, sis. That's right. We are the children of Israel. That's right. How come Pastor ain't never show you this? Why did he show you if we didn't keep the commandments, the curses, meaning slavery on ships, what happened to our children, our little ones? What happened to our mothers? What happened to our grandfathers? Why they didn't teach you this? What happened after we, when we got here on slave ships, what happened after that? We were sold, right? We were sold. Let's keep reading. Watch what it says, Angela. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. And there what? And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. For God men. For slave men. And God women. And slave women. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy you. Uh, Jeremiah 14 and 2. And it says, no man shall buy you. We're going to prove to you that this Bible says, you know what a lot of people say, sis? Angela, you know why they don't listen to the Bible? They think it was written by black, by white men. They said it was written by white men, sis. We're going to show you that these are black men that wrote the Bible. Right. Yeah. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Come on. Judah morning. And Judah, if you can see, that's you, sis. Next time somebody asks you your nationality, you say, I'm from the tribe of Judah. That's right. You say you're from the tribe of Judah, not African American. Don't ever represent two white people again that raped, robbed, and murdered your foremothers right. and forefathers right. and your babies. Don't do it. Don't ever do it again just because America's educational system taught you to. They couldn't prove it, though. Let's read. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languid. It's talking about you, sis. Judah is in mourning. We struggle, don't we? We struggle with paycheck to paycheck to pay bills, right? We're in captivity even to this day. It's hard to make ends meet. It says Judah mourneth. And the gates thereof languid. They are black. Judah's what? They are black. The Bible says that? The Bible says Judah is black. Read it again. Judah morning and the gates thereof language. They are black unto the ground. Angela, it says Judah's black unto the ground. Right. You love God, sis? You love, you love God? All oh, praises. You know how you're supposed to love God according to the Bible? Bring it out. How do you love God, Angela, according to the Bible? Don't be afraid to dialogue with us. Remember, we out here because we love you, sis. We right. want you to learn the truth. That's Not right. what pastors have taught us. Right. We want to, we got to hear what the Bible says. Right. That's right. You understand, sis? Yeah, get that. Where you at? Get First Peter's also 4 and 11. Bring if anybody out. ever comes teaches you this Bible, sis, this is what they need to do. This, this is, is how they should be teaching you the Bible. Read that. The book of First Peter, chapter 4 and verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. That's what the pa pastors say nice words like Holy Ghost. Oh, this, I'm filled with the Spirit. Sis, I had a dream about you. I knew you was going to come to me and I had a premonition. These are the, these are the small words that these slick wolf pastors, that's the, that's the stuff that they be trying to speak righteousness. But it's not according to the Bible. Right. Nothing is according to the Bible, sis. So it says they need to prove what they're saying. Like prove to me you had a dream about me in the Bible. Prove to me what Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit is in the Bible. Right. You gotta you gotta come back and learn this Bible. Learn the oracles. Read it again. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as an ability which God given. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. So we gotta glorify the Heavenly Father. The way we do that is by letting the Bible come out. Right. Not our own personal words, our own arrogancy. Right. Bring it we got to let the word, the words that are in the book come out, sis. You understand? So now get 1 John 5, 5 and 3. We're going to show you, Angela, I know you got a little bit of time, but we want to show you before you go what love is, because this is a matter of life and death, sis. Right. I want right. you to know that. You are before the prophets right now. I'll make sure she gets a flyer to you. I'll read that. The book of 1 John chapter 5 verse 3. Bring it out. For this is the love of God. For what? For this is the love of God. Come on. That we keep his commandments. 
It says, she got one. It says, for this is the love of God. So how do we love God, Angela? Read it again. Hold on. Now you good. Let's read that. For this is the love of God. Come on. That we keep his commandments. John 14, 15. So how do we love God? We keep his laws, right? So now, guess what? You got to learn all 600 laws that are in the Bible. You got to learn all the laws now. Because pastors and religions are not teaching us that. Colleges are not teaching us that. Right. Now we have to learn the laws. So now you have to prepare yourself to see, are you, are you ready to worship God? Are you ready to submit yourself to God? Right. Are you, sis? All praises. Let's get that. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Bring it up! Okay, sis. Here's the commandment that our sisters do not know today. Let's read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. Bring it up! The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Angela, what did it say? A woman is not supposed to wear pants according to God. Right. Keep reading. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. And a man is not supposed to have on a dress. Right. Vice versa. Read. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. God says it's an abomination whoever does those things. So the woman's not supposed to wear what? Angela, what what's pants, right? All praise to the most high. All praise to the most high. So give her let's get let's give you a commandment that you are keeping real quick. Give first Corinthians 11 and 3. I'm gonna show I'm gonna show you real quick. Now you know you're supposed to have on a dress after we read that, right? Right? All praises. Now, I'm gonna show you something that you're doing correctly, and then we're gonna go back and touch on that again. Read that real quick. The book of first Corinthians, chapter eleven and verse uh, five. Bring it out. But every woman that prayeth or prophesies. Every woman that's listening to the Bible, Angela, this is what they must do. With her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. If you had your head uncovered right now, you would be disrespecting your husband or if you're not married, Jesus Christ. Right. Did you know that, sis? But your head is covered. So you're keeping a you're keeping that did you know that was a commandment? So do you read the Bible? Okay, and you pray, right? So what are you supposed to do when you pray? Huh? Read it again, watch this. That's why I need you, I need you, uh, what they call it? Full attention. attention. Right. Undivided attention. Let's read. First Corinthians 11 and verse 5. But every woman that prayed or prophesied. Every woman that prays or reads the Bible or is getting the Bible taught to them. With her head uncovered. Does what? Dishonoreth her head. So you're keeping that commandment right now. So when you pray, what are you supposed to do? Wear hair cover. That's right. right. All right. praises. All praises. So let's get back to uh, Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Watch this because it says, The woman shall not wear that pertaineth unto a man, neither must a man wear woman's clothing. Right? Let's read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and 5. Come on. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. You know why, sis? You know why a woman's supposed to wear a dress? Because you're a princess. Right. right. What? You're a princess of Israel. You know, women started wearing pants during the feminist movement. Right. Women right. have only been wearing pants. You know how long women have been wearing pants, sis? For 50 years. Right. Did you know that? The feminist movement started in the 70s. You heard that, sis? So before that, our grandmothers was wearing what? They was wearing dresses, even in the cotton fields. Right. They was wearing, they was wearing dresses. Pull that. They was wearing, they was wearing dresses even in the cotton fields, sis. You understand? You see our sisters right there. Look at that dress. When did all women start wearing pants? Huh? No, pants, pants. They wore dresses on the cotton fields. Right. When did they wear pants? When did that happen? Huh? The feminist movement. Feminist movement. Is that a good movement? Why? It created a lot of fatherless homes. It created, a, you know what it's creating? A lot of abortions. Because sisters, you know what they do? You know what they what they put their faith in? Welfare, SSI, food stamps. So the white man gives them a way out. So it's easy to get rid of the man now. All right. It's easy to get rid of your man because the, I can I go run to the white man and get some food stamps and, and, and uh welfare. I, I don't need to have you in my in my life, nigga. That's what we say. Right, sis? 
Who, don't, nobody got more, don't nobody got more uh, ho uh, uh, fatherless homes than blacks and Latinos, sis. Right. Okay, uh, get that for now, one and Go ahead. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you just a couple more, sis. Lord's will, Lord's will, you repent, you give us a call, okay? Because you need to come to the school so you can meet the other sisters and so that you can start learning how to apply God's commandment because you said you love God, but now we have to show them with our actions. Right. Let's read. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 1 and verse 8. Come on, no. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. It says in the future, anytime you hear Angela in the Bible, it says it, it shall come to pass. It's talking about when Christ come back. It's right. not, it's not going to be, it's not going to be, uh, Lollipops and bubble gum. It's not. Gonna, it's gonna be destruction. Bring it out. You heard. It's gonna. It's gonna be destruction. Read. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children. Hey, sis. Look at why he's gonna punish us, Angela. Watch, watch why he's gonna punish us. And the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. Angela, you heard that? Those that are clothed with strange apparel. You heard this? The reason, the reason our, our, our uh, grandmothers, Angela, our grandmothers wore leggings. You know why they wore leggings? Because it was cold out. Right. And if there was ever a breeze that would lift their skirt up, they would, they would, they would, they would, Angela, they would put their dress back down. You heard, Angela? They didn't even want to be seen in their tights. Angela. You understand? They didn't even want to be seen in their tights because that's really, it's really underwear. It's not meant to be out in public, but America labeled it normal. Right. America labeled it normal. That's not normal to have on leggings just showing your body because your body is for your husband. Right. Your body is meant for your husband, not for the world. Right. Our sisters, blacks and Latinas, are the most beautiful women on earth. That's why God says, I'm going to give y'all the dress code so you can respect and, re and, and give reverence to your husband and show that that's only for him. Let's read that. The book of Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. Well, that's strange to God. You know why it's strange? Because it's not according to the Bible. So you have to put on a beautiful dress, sis. Because the men out here are only going to be lusting after you. They're not over there looking, oh, that's wifey. That's not what that's what that's not what's going on in their brains. They're like, they're looking at a piece of meat. They're looking at our sisters disrespectfully. They're not looking to make a wife out of you. They're looking to make a baby mama out of you. You get what I'm saying? So you treat yourself like royalty. Naive. You, you, you put the dress on and show them I am a princess. Right. Get first Timothy 2 and 9. Yes, sir. Hey, hey, Angela, that's your that's your son? Are you are you in a relationship? His son, is his father in his life? Huh? Oh, I'm not sure, Angela. Can a woman raise a child by herself? Why not? Huh? Why, do, why, why, why you don't think so? It takes two, right? That's why, give me Isaiah 3 and 12. That's why the, the orderness of marriage, the Lord sets up an order of how he wants his daughters and his sons to be with one another. Right. That's why he says marriage is honorable. Because a single mother raising a son or a daughter by herself, nine times out of ten, Angela, is not going to work out. All right. That's what God says. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3 and verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors. God says children oppress us. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native American children, they oppress us. The gangs, the robbers, the murders. Right. Right. Prison right. is filled with black children. Right. It's filled with Hispanic children, and they all share the same uh, story. They only had one person in the household. Right. They only had a mother. Father was never there. Read. And women rule over them. You hear that, Angela? Did you hear what the Bible just said? What does it say? It said the children that oppress us are ruled by women. Why didn't it say they're ruled by men? Huh? 
is the men are not there. Right. right. So your job, Angela, is to learn how to become a mother. Because so nobody's born a mother. Nobody's born knowing how to raise a kid. Nobody's born. Give me Titus too. So your job, Angela, you gotta come, you gotta come around sisters who know how to be a mother. Right. Who knows how to be a wife. Right. Do you, do you desire to be a wife? Do you desire to be a wife? Well, guess what, sister? We got men. We got men that are looking for wives. You know. They're not looking for a jump off. They're not looking for a, a big booty Betsy and that's it, any quitter. They're looking for a sister to marry. Right. Are you looking to get married? Are you looking for that man to provide for you? To care for you and your son? Well, sister, where you at? You ain't gonna find it. That's right. right. You ain't gonna find a man that's gonna be willing to take care of you and your son. Right. Righteously. You ain't gonna find it out there. The only, Angela, the only place you're gonna find it is right here. Yeah. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.